a study published in the journal Cretaceous Research describes some incredible discoveries regarding the migration of a new hadrosaur species, Ajnabia odysseus. According to the researchers, a population of A. odysseus swam across the sea from Cretaceous continent Europe and Laurasia into African Gondwana. A snippet from the study asserts, dispersal across marine barriers also occurs in other hadrosaurid lineages and titanosaurian sauropods, suggesting oceanic dispersal played a key role in structuring Mesozoic terrestrial dinosaur faunas. In other words, dinosaurs be swimming. Let's start with some interesting geographical context. Around the Triassic period, Pangaea was somewhat divided into two subcontinents, Laurasia, which included today's North America, Europe, and Asia, and Gondwana, which included South America, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. During this time, dinosaurs could disperse across the huge landmass, and not coincidentally, there was a relatively small amount of diversity between dinosaur species during the Triassic period. As continental drift occurred, the continents, uh, drifted, and large bodies of water formed the gaps between emerging continents. By the Jurassic period, we can begin to see the continents we know today take shape. During this period, dinosaur species diversity took a huge leap as animals became geographically isolated from each other. By the Cretaceous period, when our dinosaur swimmy story takes place, the continents were separated significantly by seas and oceans. Fun fact, sea levels were about 100 meters higher during this time than today. During the late Cretaceous, Laurasia was predominantly populated by hadrosaurs and ceratopsians, with tyrannosaurs as their apex predators. Gondwana, on the other hand, was dominated by titanosaurian sauropods and abelosaurid predators. Our swimmy friends, Ajnabia odysseus, were small lambiosaurins, a group of hadrosaurs known for their distinct crests and thought to be endemic to Laurasia. Lambiosaur phylogenic analysis groups A. odysseus within Arenisaurini, a clad of lambiosaurins previously thought to only reside in Europe. You can imagine why the researchers were surprised to find A. Odysseus in Casablanca, Morocco. As the leader of the study, Dr. Longerich, put it, it was completely out of place, like finding a kangaroo in Scotland. Unless aliens did it, the absence of land bridges suggests that the only possible way for them to reach Africa was to swim across the Atlantic Ocean. The name Ajnabia Odysseus is inspired by this achievement. Ajnabi means foreigner in Arabic, and Odysseus is an allusion to the legendary Greek mythological hero who journeyed across the sea. It never ceases to amaze me how hardy herbivores can be. Who knows why they decided to swim across the sea? My guess, the lambiosaurs were fleeing a natural disaster like a storm. This reminds me of those cows that swam about five miles from Cedar Island to the coast of North Carolina when Hurricane Dorian swept through. If they have a reason to swim, they'll swim. But what are the effects of geographic isolation? Why is it that A. Odysseus is so small? Because other lambiosaurs are very much not so. I'll attempt to paint you a picture. Imagine there is a relatively diverse population of lambiosaurs in Europe who live on a peninsula of some sort. A storm or mudslide or a volcano scares this population into the water, and they keep swimming and swimming. Many of the animals die on the journey. My guess, the big ones tire easier and cannot continue swimming. Eventually, the group of swimming dinosaurs reaches the African mainland, and the remaining population is a genetically similar group of small lambiosaurs with similar characteristics that enabled them to survive the journey. In addition, the dinosaurs are subject to new environmental pressures in the new environment of Africa, and the remaining survivors reproduce into a genetically distinct species, Ajnabia odysseus. Of course, this is hypothetical, but I think it makes sense from a natural selection point of view. I hope you learned something about prehistoric geography or natural selection or how impressive animals really are. These little guys were incredible, and it's hard to imagine that so many unbelievable events and so many hardships are completely gone from history without a trace, save for a few little fossils in Morocco. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.